Welcome to Real Estate Investing Secrets. We're all looking for freedom and the opportunity to live better, more fulfilling lives. But most of us were trained our entire lives to work for someone else and chase their dreams. How can we use real estate investing as a vehicle to achieve financial freedom? My life is dedicated to answering your real estate investing questions and helping you build an investing business that allows you to change your life and the world around you and to enable you to turn your dreams of financial freedom into a reality. My name is Mike Hambright from FlipNerd.com and your questions get answered here on the Real Estate Investing Secrets Show. What's up, Freedom Fighters? Hey, welcome back to the show. Mike Hambright with FlipNerd.com here. This is episode number 461, and we've got my buddy uh, Ben Fredericks here with us today. He's going to talk to us about some pretty, pretty awesome stuff. He's had um, a good level of success over the past several years, and he's moving more and more into owner financing. And we're going to talk about that, why it's good for investors and why it's good for people, because he has as a mission to help 10,000 families get home ownership that couldn't otherwise. And there's a lot of benefits for investors to do more owner financing as well. And I've started to see a lot of things pop up about uh, owner financing and rentals and other cash flowing assets and that people are kind of saying there's been all this hype over the last several years about wholesaling and how great wholesaling is. And I think uh, uh, there's a place for it, no doubt. And I've wholesaled hundreds of properties. But when you start to look back now and you're like, wow, what if I kept those as <laughs> rentals or you know, it doesn't mean that you could have at the time, but if you start to think more about doing something today that pays you for years to come, then that's how you really build wealth. That's the sexy side of the business when there's money coming in while you sleep. So, uh, Ben, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Mike. I'm excited. Yeah, glad to have you on. Uh, another little small uh, uh, side note here is Ben is actually from the same general kind of hometown area as me in uh, Western. I'm, I'm from the Western Illinois side, right on the Mississippi River, the area called the Quad Cities, and Ben's from the Iowa side of uh, the Quad Cities. And so, uh, don't meet very many. There's there's a couple of real estate investors that I know from that area. So, always exciting to meet somebody back from the hometown. Yeah. Uh, strangely enough, I meet people from the Quad Cities all the time. It's really weird. Don't yeah. I? Yeah. So. Well, you'll meet uh, ben, ben, you're, uh, Ben's a new member of our Investor Fuel Mastermind. And, um, uh, here in the next, uh, I guess in about 10 days or so, we have a next meeting. You're going to meet uh, Blake uh, McCrate, who's also from the Quad Cities as well, who's a member. He's, he lives in the Chicago market, but awesome. Well, hey, uh, glad to have you on. And for those that don't don't know you yet or don't know a lot about you, maybe tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, I wasn't always a real estate investor. I actually uh, started my career uh, as a mortgage broker, so kind of learned uh, the finance side of that. I went to work for a small company called Lehman Brothers that you probably heard of and uh, did, some, did some work for them in the glory days when uh, it was all fun and games. But uh, that quickly came to an end. And, uh, you know, I was in a position where I was buying property. I was doing the right things with my money, investing my money into property. I wasn't out buying sports cars or, you know, $20,000 watches like a lot of my colleagues were. Yeah. And my wife and I were just taking our money saying, all right, let's take 20%. We'll put it into a property, 20%, put it into a property, and, you know, just sort of inching our way up into what we thought would be like real estate world domination. And then the bottom falls out, you know, so and then the house of cards just really begins to, you know, start tumbling down. I lost my job at Lehman Brothers. My wife was working for Chase Manhattan Bank. And then, you know, our tenants started losing their job. And then we're like, okay, we're in trouble. So mm. basically fast forward, you know, uh, and this is all, by the way, right when we got married. So imagine you're like, all right, let me put my relationship to the ultimate test here. And <laughs> you're going through all of this. So after that happened, uh, I just wanted to try and find work where I didn't have to worry about the company being a problem at some point in the future. So I went to work in financial services uh, for New York Life and uh, spent about six years with them, another two with Allstate. Uh, and then my little girl came along and my wife repurposed her career. She went back to school be to become a chiropractor. And I said, once you're done with that, I'm out of this. I'm getting back into real estate. So yep. it's, it's time. So a partner, a friend of mine, from, actually from the Quad Cities, uh, we started buying some deals in Davenport and we bought, you know, again, just inching our way, bought one deal, let it save some money, bought another deal, say refinanced, bought another deal. Uh, and then, you know, I realized I'm like, man, I'm just not 
making a lot of progress. You know, we're buying, we bought five deals in like three years. I was like, I'm mm. never going to get financially free going at this pace. It's just not going to happen. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I really just started learning and consuming everything I could about real estate. All right. Wholesaling. You know, I go and take courses and seminars, reading books and watching YouTube videos, podcasts, whatever, whatever I could get my eyes and ears on. Um, and I started putting out, this always comes off kind of hokey. I don't know how many of your listeners actually believe in the law of attraction, but I'm a big believer in it. So I started putting out into the universe what I wanted to do in this business and I got a phone call one day. I was waiting to get my hair cut and it's from my partner. And he says, my name is Odell Barnes. And this might be the greatest call you ever got. And <laughs> I really had to laugh. Like I was like, yeah, okay. I'll yeah. <laughs> He's like, I, I got, I, was, it, was it in a Morgan Freeman voice? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's from South Carolina. So, you know, he's got like this yeah. old, old country boy, Southern charm going. And, yeah. um, I just, I, I laughed and I was like, well, how'd you get my number? And he says, uh, well, I, I, I found you off of Craigslist and said, you fund deals. So at that time I was trying to syndicate because I knew people that had money and they were looking for other you know ways to diversify. And um, it didn't, the deals he was looking to get done were just very complex and I couldn't, I couldn't quite put it together. But he's like, well, I'm in Daytona Beach. I was like, oh, I, I live right down the road from there. So let's get together and I'll buy you a drink. So I just went to meet him and uh, that meeting changed my life. Like literally uh, it opened my eyes to what was possible in real estate. So, yeah, we started off uh, before we hit, before I hit the record button today, we were talking about the, you just went to Grant Cardone's 10 X uh, event and we were just kind of talking about thinking bigger and how a lot of people think small. And, and I, I honestly have said that to my wife, uh, over the past year or so many times, like we, people were doing some things and it feels like we're making some moves that on the outside world, people think that we're like something big, you know, but I say to my wife, I'm like, I, I feel like I'm thinking too small. Like w what can we do that, to think that what do we need to do to, to do something bigger? And uh, I don't know, sometimes I don't know what that is, but it's just this burn in your stomach of like, yeah, this seems like a bold move, but this is like, like then you compare yourself to like Grant Cardone or somebody else and you're like, I'm just like a little peanut over here. Like, what well, you know, should I be thinking bigger? Uh, talk a little bit about your thoughts on how, because I think back to your uh, initial part of your story of saying you, you had a job, a good job for a while until you lost it and you were doing some stuff in real estate. But ultimately when you look back, I know you think that was just peanuts. That's, that's not moving the needle fast enough. Yeah. And I tend to agree with you that there's a lot of people that are kind of dabbling here and there. They have some interest, but they're thinking small. And just maybe share your thoughts on, you know, kind of the power of, I guess, thinking bigger. It changes everything. I mean, it really does. Because if you find yourself like, all right, I, I'm, I'm inching along, I'm, I'm doing well, that's usually the only thing that's uh, forcing that to happen is usually it's out of fear. Like it's, there's, you're scared. And I've been there. I know I've, I've been in the same exact position. You go through financial failure, you do not want it to happen again. So when that happens, you go into conservation mode, which is the exact wrong mode. You know, you look at guys like Grant Cardone, he's constantly saying, I stay broke. You know, I don't stay poor, but I stay broke. I'm constantly pushing myself. Right. So I just had a, like an epiphany that said, all right, if I'm scared, that means I got to do it. So that means I, I'm, I'm moving the needle in the right direction. Like I got to just lean into it hard and yep. think good things will come from it. So, and I'm just going to put myself into a position where I cannot fail. There's no other choice but to succeed here. Yep. So that, that was the game changer for me. Just saying it's a decision. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen, uh, the, the, uh, history channel, of uh, kind of mini series on the men who built America? Yes. Uh, I love it. So I, I have the DVD. Honestly, I, I watch it. I probably watch it four or five times a year. It's only a couple years old, but I've seen it over and over again. And, and I'm not saying, you know, it's basically about Vanderbilt and um, all the big guys, uh, kind of industrial uh, era of barons. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's good in parts of them. Some of them were, sometimes they come off as being evil. Sometimes they come off as, you know, there, were, there weren't a lot of rules back then, right? So <laughs> a lot of laws. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing about it is, and some of this is the story that's told in the way it's told it to, but there's this line in there that energizes me every time I think of it or I hear it. 
And it basically says that these guys were continuously willing to bet it all. Like they had everything in the world and they would just go all in on, on something new because they had this vision for it and they, they weren't afraid to, to risk it all. And I don't want people to get carried away. And, but I think what you said is very powerful. If you try to stay safe, it's hard to, it's hard to move the needle in your life. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot that of safety is really a perception, right? It's like you felt safe in your job before you didn't have it. And my story too, is I worked for a large corporation and I was like the golden child there at this uh, relatively large retail company until I lost my job. I went from like being the golden boy to like out and nobody wants to talk to me anymore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It's so critical. I mean, if you can just, if you can be brave enough to take the leap, I mean, it can be a game changer for people. You don't yeah. have to go nuts with it, but at least put yourself in a position where you feel uncomfortable and then yep. great things can come from it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's kind of dive into talking about um, the owner finance model. So I know you wholesale, you do a number of things in real estate, uh, but we kind of started off talking about the owner finance model and the benefits of how it helps you as an investor and how it helps people get homes that can't otherwise. So let's kind of maybe talk a little bit about why owner financing works uh, for you as an investor, why it makes sense. Yeah, we, like I said before, we own some rentals um, and there's a lot of work that goes into owning rentals. I mean, even if you have a management company, management companies, you know, they're, they're not around long time unless you're really, really lucky. So, and you've got to watch them closely. So there's, you know, effort that comes from that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, I just, I hadn't learned about owner financing until I met my partner. I didn't really know much about it. So the idea of it was fascinating. I, I, I understood it from the perspective of me as an investor. I could approach somebody and see if they would owner finance a deal for me. Like if I wanted to look at multifamily or whatever. Um, but I didn't really understand the model for me become the bank, you know. So what we started out doing was just wholesaling, you know, buying deals, selling them, Pop, you know, maybe taking uh, three deals and keeping one, you know, and creating a note on that. And then right. just continuing, continuing, continuing until we built up, you know, passive income. So the idea of it is, is that there's not a whole lot of work that goes into it. The buyer pays the taxes, they pay the insurance, they make the repairs, they pay the maintenance, they mow the lawn, they do everything. And then all I'm paying is a servicing fee every month to collect that, that payment. Mm -hmm. So, I don't get the same, you know, tax considerations that I do owning rental properties. I don't get the right. depreciation and stuff like that, but I'm willing to trade that for the effort that comes along with it. Right. So, you know, that's why I, I really kind of bought into that model saying, okay, the biggest businesses in the world are banks. Why can't I be one? Yeah. Yeah. And, Exactly. And so for, for those that maybe owner financing is, they don't really know what that is. Maybe just talk at a high level about uh, what that even means. Yeah. So essentially if I buy a house, let's say I buy a house for $10,000, I can turn around and create a note on that property for $40,000 and I'll collect a down payment and then I'll get a monthly payment. Now I've got a tangible asset that I can actually sell. I hold the paper to that property. So the person that's living there, they're just like most people, most Americans, they're buying something that is going to be theirs. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm holding that debt and they're paying me just like they would a bank on a mortgage. Yep. And, and the reason that the model works for us as investors, I have some, I have some owner finance deals myself as well. And I, I you know, uh, coincidentally look back and say, I, I, I should have done many more over the years. I had the opportunity to, is that, um, you know, we're able to borrow at a certain rate and the types of people that we're selling to um, either have no established credit or they have bad credit or, and they're willing to effectively pay more, a higher interest rate. So you're able to make a spread on that. And, and, and for anybody that, you know, hears that and says, oh, you're taking advantage of somebody. It's like, well, the truth is, is, and I don't know about your deals, but usually the way the model works is you're, you're allowing somebody to own something that is not, not too much different than what they would pay had they, if they were renting it, right? But they have a chance to earn equity and get some appreciation and all those things over time. That's exactly right. Yeah, our model is basically we will look at what the market rents are and we always want to be less than the market rents. So they'll be less after they pay taxes, after they pay insurance, they're always going to be less than what the rents are in that neighborhood. 
And that right. creates a great thing for us because where are they going to go that would be better than this? They own it. You know, go back to throwing rent away, you know, on, on to a landlord. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right. And, you know, that, that, that's been good. Also, we, we want to give them equity right from the start. So we don't, you know, let's say the house is actually worth, you know, 75,000. We're, we're going to give it to them maybe at 40 to 50,000 so that they've got wow. built in equity. There's incentive there. And, and we do that for two reasons. One, it's great for the buyer. It's fantastic for them. It puts them in a position to win. Second, it gives us an opportunity to allow them to help educate them on how they could possibly refinance in a year and pay us out 100% of the balance mm. as opposed to selling off a discounted note if we wanted to recapitalize down the road. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I've also found the way it works as a real estate investor too is uh, – yeah, and everybody's model is different. I don't know. Uh, there's people that uh, like Mitch Steven, if you know him, that basically right. sell the houses as is. That's how I sell mine now. Early on, I kind of rehabbed them. <laughs> and so is that, uh, look, as a real estate investor, I found that when I go to rehab a house, you know, it's not uncommon that 60 plus percent of the rehab is labor, right? Because I'm not doing the work myself. I'm going to pay somebody else to do it. But when you're selling to somebody that is going to live in the home, is it's an entry level home working class person that they're willing to work for that sweat equity sometimes. So if the house needs some work, it needs to be painted, needs some, some fixing up, it's usually livable, but not, you know, needs to be updated yeah. is they're willing to take on that burden in exchange for sweat equity effectively. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, that, yeah. That's one of the Mitch Stevens is brilliant. I mean, that's, that's a guy I, I, I literally just met him in person at a note conference a couple months ago, but I read his books and, and dig his podcast up. I learned so much from him on owner financing that uh, has been tremendously helpful. Yeah. Mitch has been on the show. I think, I think three or three or four times actually over the years. So uh, cool. Well, let's talk about um, uh, a little bit more about why it's good for homeowners. Like who, who would you say are the typical buyers? I mean, I talked a little bit, they either have tarnished credit or no established credit. Right. But it's, let's be honest, basically the traditional lending, uh, industry is not willing to bet on that person anymore. It right. could be because of the size of the loan. It could be because of they have tarnished credit. Um, but, but talk about who that customer is and why they need you and why, why it's, you know, why it's a good fit. Yeah. Usually they, they fit a certain profile. Um, you know, they could be self-employed. They can't prove a lot of income. Uh, they can show money coming in, but they don't show it on a tax return. Um, you know, they have screwed up in the past, but, you know, the last couple of years, they've been good. Like they've reestablished that, you know, they, they've paid good rental history. They've got a good job. They've been on their job for, uh, you know, a decent amount of time. So they're just people that, you know, maybe caught a bad break, you know, somebody in their right. family got sick or they got sick. Uh, we get that or they got divorced and they got cleaned out, you know, and they're like, look, man, my, my last spouse, they got the house I lived in. It was my dream place. And now I'm starting from scratch again. And, you know, so, I, I just, uh, those are the typical people that, or they're tired of throwing money away on rent. They're like, seriously, I, I've seen this place across the street for like the last three years, the banks would never sell it or I couldn't get financing and you guys are going to sell it to me, you know, and I'm paying rent here, you know, twice as much as what I could to own that place right across the street. So those are our typical buyers. I mean, they, they usually yep. feel very certain mold. And lenders are, uh, lenders don't really like a uh, low dollar house. I mean, they make, everything, all the money they make is based on the size of the loan, the bigger the loan, the better. So the, some of the houses you're talking about 40, 50, $60,000, usually if it's under 50, I don't think you, it's going to have, have a hard time finding a lender to even do it. Right. That's right. Those low dollar ones. Plus they just get really hampered with a lot of fees, even if they are willing to do it. Cause the banks say, Hey, this might be a small loan. The only way I can make money on it is to fee you to death. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's yeah. just in a low interest rate environment. It's just not worth it to the bank. Right. Too much risk. Yeah. Too yeah. Low. Right, right. So um, for folks that are listening right now, they're real estate investors and they're like, hey, I've done, uh, I'm a wholesaler, I'm a rehabber, I have some buy and hold stuff. Talk a little bit about how if they want to do more owner finance, how do they kind of learn how to get started or kind of learn to move in that direction a little bit? Yeah, I think uh, the same way that I learned from it, find somebody in the business that's doing it and just model it. Modeling is like the fastest way to success, no matter what you're doing. If you can f find somebody that's doing it, playing at a good level, yep. you know, deconstruct what they're doing and then just go 
rebuild it. I mean, you and I were talking about click funnels before we started. Russell Brunson, one of his biggest thing is funnel hacking, right? Basically right. modeling somebody else's funnel. He's a big Tony Robbins guy. So that's where I'm, you know, this isn't something I just came up with. This is something I've heard for years. Modeling is the fastest way to success. So find somebody that's doing it, you know, learn from them as much as you can. And then the biggest thing is just go out and start doing it. Take the action to get it done. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And we, we, I can, we talked about Mitch Steven a little bit. I'll add a couple, I'll add some links in the show notes here for uh, some of his past shows, but yeah, I, th- I do that in everything. I, I used to go try to learn on my own and um, I'm going to watch videos and find those things. And that's always a good way to get started. But like you said, now it depends on where you are in your life. Right. But now I'm, I'm much more willing, like speed of implementation is critical for me. So I never really look at the, at this point where I'm at in my life and my career, I don't have years to learn anything. So for example, I, I, uh, I did a couple multifamily deals uh, late last year with my buddy, Corey Peterson. Uh, also, he's an investor fuel. If you don't know Corey, you're going to meet him here at the next meeting. And uh, it's like, look, I don't want to go figure this stuff out. That That's his model. So I just partnered with him on the deals. And truthfully, I, I did very little because he, he took it, he took care of everything and he knew how to do it. And I don't want to learn. I don't have the time to learn that. And, um, you know, ultimately, could I make more money if I go find my own deals and do all the work? Yeah, but the truth is, is I'm never going to get there if I have to go figure that all out on my own. And so depending on where you are in your life, once you find the person that has that model already figured out, you should be willing to pay for it because the yeah. opportunity cost of you trying to figure it out for years on your own and all the trials and tribulations and failures, um, you know, you learn from failure, but it's just as easy to learn from somebody else's failures and <laughs> faster, cheaper. Ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. You're buying failure at a huge discount when you ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, I agree. I think that's like the best thing that you could do. If you, if you don't want to, if you're busy doing something else, cause we have a lot of uh, private money people, partners, you know, that they, they're completely busy in other things in their lives. You know, they've got their own careers, you know, they don't have the time to reinvent the wheel here. They, they see the model. They're like, Oh, okay, this works, you know? All right, here, you just do what you do and pay me a return, you know, and that's great. So, but if, if you're trying to get your foot into that door, if you can do both, that's really good. So if you can commit time and money to get access to, you know, people that are playing at a level that you want to be in, it's a, it's a game, it's a game changer. That's awesome. That's awesome. Guys, if you're listening right now, if you have some questions, what I want you to do is uh, if you're not already a member of our flip nerd real estate investing Facebook group, go over to, uh, if you can get there by going to flipnerd.com slash Facebook, and we'll redirect you there. And if you're not already a member, um, just request access and we'll, we'll let you in. But uh, we're going to add the video. Uh, it, you'll find it there in the Facebook group. And if you have questions about this, you want to interact with Ben, or you have any questions that I can help you with, just go ahead and chat your questions in there and we'll do our best to get answers for you. So again, you can get there by going to flipnerd.com slash Facebook. If you haven't already yet, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, YouTube, all the other places where you might find this uh, content at. Please, uh, please subscribe and give us some feedback and maybe share it to your network. We'd appreciate you sharing the love here. This is uh, episode number 461. And we're going to keep them coming at you if you keep showing us, showing us some love. So I, Ben, thanks for spending some time with us today. Uh, so it's been awesome, man. Uh, it's my yeah. pleasure. Hey, if folks want to learn more about you or I know you, you wholesale deals in lots of markets too. If they want to find out more about some opportunities to maybe work with you, where, where should they go? So you can find us all over social media. It's just Odell Barnes REO, which is O D E L L B A R N E S R E O. Uh, that's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, and that's also our website, odellbarnsreo.com. Awesome. We're going to add some links down below in the show notes here for uh, folks to find you there too, if they're driving and can't write it down right now. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm excited. To, go ahead. Find me on Instagram. I need some more followers. Yeah. I'm trying to build up an Instagram too. I, I got, that's what all the, that's what all the cool, that's what all the cool kids are doing. I guess. I guess. Yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably about four years behind on that, but uh Awesome. Well, uh, Ben, thanks again for spending time with us today. This is great stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people hopefully will learn more. I mean, maybe you could talk real briefly again, just real fast about the power of not just that model, but I know that you just from everything that you just said, and I know I'm the same thing uh, the same place right now is I appreciate cash flow, cash flow, creating revenue streams like that, that are going to pay me for a long period of time versus big chunks of money from wholesaling and rehabbing. I might get more than I did in the past. It's probably a a business maturity and an age thing where you start to appreciate that 
but maybe just share some wisdom for people that are like, they're not quite there yet. Uh, the power of that kind of more passive, uh, cash flow. Yeah. I just, I tell you, man, I just turned 40 last year and I didn't really grasp the power of cash flow. Like I was flipping some deals and you're like, Oh, okay. It's nice to get a $10,000 check and that's exciting. But after that ends, it's like, now what, you know? So that is right. the, 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 the polish wears off a little bit. Yeah. So it never wears off with the cash flow. Those checks keep coming. And while it's, it's definitely, you know, a little bit more long term. I don't look at real estate as get rich quick. I look at it as get rich for sure. And that's what cash flow can do. I mean, like it. yeah, it's just awesome. 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 Thanks. Thanks again for sharing your wisdom with us today. My pleasure, Mike. Good awesome. to talk to you. I'll see Everybody, you. hey, this is episode number 461. We appreciate you joining us today. Uh, again, join the Facebook group over at uh, flipner.com slash Facebook and ask some questions on this video. We'll do our best to get some answers for you. Until the next episode, stay strong, stay cool, and keep on fighting for freedom. See you next time. Thanks for listening to today's show. There are three ways I can help you start or grow your real estate investing business. If you're a new investor and just getting started, the Flip Nerd Investor Coaching Program is the most effective program in America. I've been coaching and mentoring new real estate investors for 10 years, and my students have literally purchased thousands and thousands of properties. Many of them started with little to no experience at all. Our program is a paint by numbers program where we tell you exactly what to do week by week to make sure that you don't get distracted on your way to results. We show you how to build a real business, not just create another job for yourself. New memberships are limited. You can learn more and apply or schedule a call with me and my team at flipnerd.com slash coaching. If you're an experienced investor doing a minimum of 10 deals a year, up to 500 deals a year or more, or have a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio already, you should check out our powerful Investor Fuel Real Estate Investor Mastermind. Over 100 of the nation's leading real estate investors are members, and it's not uncommon for our members to 2 to 5x their business just from getting around other members at Investor Fuel. At Investor Fuel, each of us are business advisors to one another's businesses, but we don't stop at business. We focus heavily on becoming better people and living fuller lives. If you're looking for fuel for your business or fuel for your life, please check out InvestorFuel.com. Applications and interviews are required as most investors are not a fit for our community. Please learn more at InvestorFuel.com. If you're not ready for coaching or masterminds, but eager to start learning more about investing, please join our private Facebook group by visiting flipnerd.com slash Facebook. New members get access to free training from us right here at flipnerd.com. And it's a community to safely ask your questions, a great place to get started. Simply go to flipnerd.com slash Facebook to request your access today.